Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us tonight for a night of movies starring Sophia Loren. An international star, soon after stepping in front of the camera, Loren proved early on that she was much more than a beautiful young actress. She proved quickly that she was an actor with uncommon depth who somehow remained accessible and relatable on screen despite being perhaps the most attractive human being in the recorded history of time. She cemented her status as a serious actor when she earned an Oscar for the performance she gives in our next movie. It's from 1960, Two Women, a crushingly honest story about a mother and daughter trying to survive in Italy during World War II. And joining me to discuss the film and Sophia Loren is Eduardo Ponti, Sophia Loren's son, Carlo Ponti's son, and an accomplished filmmaker himself. He has also written a new book of poetry, Letters from a Young Father. Eduardo, welcome back. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about two women. Where was your mother in her career at this point? My mother had starred in a string of successful comedies at this point. And so she was already a bona fide star, but she was not yet truly respected as an actor. Bona fide star almost entirely in Europe. Yes, absolutely, yes. Um, so what would make a director like Vittorio De Sica think that she was capable, and he obviously understood her talent as well as anyone, Yes. what made him think that she could carry this picture? He didn't at first. Uh, the role of Chizira was offered to Anna Magnani. And when my father and De Sica uh, paid a visit to Magnani to tell her that they wanted my mother to play the role of her daughter. In the, the to, so people understand, in the novel, the mother is in her 50s. Correct. And the daughter is in her 20s or 30s. That's right. So it was, you know, it was understood that they were going to do these, this double bill, you know, Sophia Loren, Anna Magnani. Um, and... Anna Magnani, upon hearing this piece of news, uh, didn't like it at all. She felt that um, the audience wouldn't believe that my mother was uh, her daughter and she didn't feel like visually these two women would, would look good together. So she was very, very much against the idea, despite the repeated efforts of both my father and De Sica to convince her otherwise. So what happened is at the end of that meeting, which went very badly, <laughs> um, Anna escorted uh, my father and De Sica back to the door and right before closing that door, she threw out a joke. She said, if you like Sofia so much, why don't you have her play my role? And De Sica turned, looked at Anna Magnani and said, you know what? You gave me a great idea. De Sica telegrammed my mother that night and wrote, you will be Cesira, trust me. And the rest is history. How did your mother react? Well, she, she always reacts the way that she does. How am I going to do this? How am I going to wrap my mind, my heart in this role? And it is that my, my mother approaches every movie like this, which is, this is impossible, I can't, and then she does it, and then she feels a sense of achievement that she did it. When we all knew that she was always going to not only tackle it, but also hit it out of the park. But that's really her kind of arc. Was she seeking to get away from being perhaps typecast as a star in mostly just comedies? Did she want to challenge herself dramatically? Yes, because she's an artist, and artists want to challenge uh, themselves. And you know, what was very beautiful is how they had such a connection, De Sica and my mother, that all he needed to do was to set the tone of the scene through the way in which he said, action. How do you mean? So if it was a scene that was funny, full of energy, he would say, azione, like with a lot of energy, with a lot of kind of vitality. And in scenes that were much more emotional, he would just, you know, very quietly, azione. And that gave her, like a conductor giving that cue, that gave my mother the emotional cue of, of the musicality of that scene.
other actors uh, certainly worth noting uh, uh, deliver very impressive performances. Uh, Jean-Paul Belmondo. Yes. Uh, and then Eleonora Brown uh, as the uh, daughter, who I think uh, obviously in the obvious sense that everyone who watches this movie is going to praise your mother, but I don't think she should be forgotten. I think it's a really impressive performance. Yes, and they've kept up their relationship all these years. They have? Yes, they have. They're still friends. Oh, that's, that's really quite lovely to hear. Well, uh, she won an Oscar for this. We'll talk about that uh, after the movie. But for now, here it is from 1960, Sophia Loren's Oscar-winning performance in Two Women. Joining me once again to discuss Two Women is the son of actress Sophia Loren and producer Carlo Ponti, a director himself, Eduardo Ponti. Uh, Eduardo, let's uh, first talk about the, uh, the sexual assault scene. Mm. Uh, how did your mother uh, prepare for that scene? You had spoken earlier in the evening when we talked about human voice that she did not like to yeah. rehearse. So that was true for this as well? That was one take. That famous moment that earned her the Oscar. That was one take. And uh, my mother asked Desika, are you sure? Shouldn't we just shoot one more in case something, I mean, this is the only, this is it. He says, I don't care. This is the one. We're moving on. Your mother was, uh, and she talked about this in the interview you did with her at the 2015 Classic Film Festival. She was thrilled to be, as she kept saying, one of the five <laughs> uh, to be uh, nominated for Best Actress. But she didn't think she had a, a chance to win. How come? Well, because um, no actress had ever won for a foreign language film as Best Actress. So For a, for a, a movie not spoken in English. That's right. right. It had never happened. So she felt her chances were very slim at best. So she chose not to come to Hollywood for the ceremony. Yeah, she chose not to come because she didn't want to be disappointed travel, tra traveling all the way here to then, you know. I, I thought that, that story, and I, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, is a little microcosm of her way of thinking because it, it's also, it's the same reason that she didn't live in Hollywood, move the whole family to Hollywood, didn't become a Hollywood star. And also, you know, her, her, her art, her artistry was born from that well. Yeah. If you uproot a person and you lose your well, then you become a diluted version of yourself. And she might have become a diluted version of herself if she had decided to live here. So uh, she doesn't travel for the Oscar ceremony. And then uh, the night of the Oscars, she, she was aware Obviously, the, the... Uh, she was aware nobody was sleeping in the house and they spend the whole night waiting for a phone call to come or not to come. And six o'clock in the morning comes around and they think, well, somebody should have called us by then, by now, which means that, Sophia, you lost. So they're about to go to bed, disappointed, pretending to be happy that she got nominated, but she really wanted to win an Oscar, when the phone rings. And my father picks up the phone, and it's Cary Grant on the other line, announcing that she won. And my mother always tells us it was very funny, because my father doesn't speak, did, didn't speak very good English, and so he kept on saying, she win, she win, she win. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and he was in his robe, and you have that famous picture of my father in his robe and my mother there opening a bottle of champagne. And, and you at know. 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the morning, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and the Carrie wanted to be the one to call. It was really, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Eduardo, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Up next, Sophia Loren stars alongside Paul Newman and David Niven in a 1965 comedy directed by Peter Ustinov. <laughs> 